Hello, Ramsey Main GDS here. I'm going to walk you through a case of a patient that's going to have to lose several molars, including their wisdom teeth. Their teeth that have the root canal, some of them have broken off at the gum line. They've been heavily restored, meaning they've been crowned and filled, root canaled multiple times, large posts, and the teeth are not salvageable and don't have a good long-term prognosis. So a dental implant is going to have a much higher long-term prognosis. We're going to end up extracting this tooth, this tooth, this tooth, the wisdom teeth all around and on the upper also. You'll see along the way this patient loses these upper crowns that have some problems in the root canal area, some infection slash inflammation. And this tooth will actually fall apart along the way. You can actually see at a later date that that tooth broke off also. Not all teeth should be saved. The patient's smile shows some heavy staining, may have some tetracycline staining of his teeth. That's his smile. With the lips retracted, you can see some of the teeth broken off with the gum line in the back and a collapsing bite that happens when you lose a tooth. On the upper jaw, one crown fell off and broke. It's going to need to be replaced also. And here's a good view of the lower wisdom teeth, which are decaying, and the two root canal teeth that are broken. These teeth are going to end up being extracted with socket bone preservation grafts done simultaneously under IV sedation with a combination of LPRF cow bone and human bone and you'll see that before the teeth are extracted that we actually lost tooth number 29 it broke off here's the other teeth extracted and at the same time a month later you can see the socket bone actually healing very well this is the patient's 3d scan taken in my office here in Burbank he's biting on this bite stick that allows the machine to center itself and this is some of the soft tissue profile of the patient's face. There's a lot of gauze in there, which makes him look a little bit swollen, but he's really not. Um, where we really see the power of the 3D scan is the ability to do virtual simulations. Uh, this, this red line on both sides, this is the nerve that you often hear about. It truly gives sensation to the lip and chin. There are branches that come off a little bit higher up in this area that give sensation to the tongue but mostly the lip and chin and part of the cheek also branches over here but again the power of the 3d scan allows me to see you know the the density of the bone the volume of the bone how tall is the bone how wide is it there there's a lot that i'm looking for i'm also looking for other pathology like in and those upper teeth that I mentioned that are eventually going to be extracted on this patient. There are areas where the root canals are failing. Those are those little black spots up in the bone. Those are not healthy root canals there that have those that have those black spots up there. If we go to the actual implant planning tab of, of the software, it really can give you an idea of of what I what I do with, with each particular patient. What I have is in virtual I have created teeth for this patient and placed the implants where they're supposed to go. This tooth number 21 is going to end up getting extracted. If you remember from the previous photograph, it broke off at the gum line right after the scan was taken. And so the plan is to extract it and place an implant at the same time. When you look at this window over here, you can see the implant fits well within the bone. There's some distance between the nerve. And the bone is pretty wide in this dimension. It's wider than the implant. That's a key element in having implants that last a very long time, is having enough bone on the outside. Typically, at least one to two millimeters is ideal. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to get one to two millimeters. Here I'm measuring 10.22 millimeters. Why do I have that volume of bone? Because the timing of this case was done right. I removed the teeth and I also grafted bone into the sockets using the patient's own blood using a product we call PRF that was made from his blood with a combination of cow bone and human bone was implanted into these sockets at the same time of extraction. These are difficult extractions. I removed the wisdom teeth simultaneously but again we have excellent quality of bone and quantity of bone. There's enough of it. It's dense enough. So I can put really big long implants which are great for the long term in this area over here you can see that this implant fits well in the bone and these are not little little skinny small ones these are going to last a, a good long time for this patient 
and also again the, the bone rendering here but where we can really see kind of you know the power of the 3d is when you when I take the the patient in this dimension over here I can actually see well how I'm gonna place the implant how is the bone density where's the marrow you can see all the details in here here's a big hollow spot in the bone here's a muscle attachment where the tongue touches the tongue muscle attaches, but look at the detail of where my virtual teeth are in relationship to the bone. And the, this is and this is where it's really all at here, where you can see and plan and understand everything well in advance of ever doing any procedure. Give you some idea of how, how the software works. In the arch section, I'll show you focus on this upper upper teeth as I roll back and forth you can actually see some of the failing root canals causing some sinus disease also sometimes root canals can be retreated if they're done very well if they've been retreated several times and there's not a lot of tooth structure left then the best thing is to remove the teeth and as I as I bring it out you can see there's the three green posts that are placed in relationship to where the final teeth are going to be you can also see another what we call endodontic lesion where the tooth is bad and will likely need to be retreated in this area so that the root canal was made to be longer but again this is what we're really looking at is the complete volume rendering of the patient and a good pre-surgical plan I feel very good going into the surgery knowing that I know the anatomy, I know where the nerve is, I know how strong the bone is, I know how tall it is, I know how wide it is. It becomes a very, very easy surgical procedure in order to do. A slightly graphic image, this is the surgery on the right side with the three implants and the bone exposed. Another view giving you an idea of the alignment which is very well placed by the 3D image guidance the purple implant was placed at the same day that the tooth was extracted while the other two behind it were placed after the bone grafts have healed so one's an immediate implant the purple one and the two yellows are same day are, are delayed placement this is the x-ray immediately post-operatively you can see really large implants placed deeply into the jawbone they're gonna last a long time a few months later the impression copings are placed in order to take impressions the gums have healed very well the patient hasn't had any symptoms whatsoever we're gonna start some laboratory procedures at the time this is done with the traditional molding impressions we do these actually digitally now with the video scanner but there are the four dental implant crowns and there's an additional crown in the very back tooth that needed to be replaced so the best thing to do is to have them all made together the teeth are made actually individual and not splinted to each other in the lower jaw if the implants are long enough they can be made as individuals those are the abutments that will be sandblasted they're prefabricated not customized because the implants are placed very straight the final photos show the monolithic zirconia crowns placed on the lower molar teeth you can actually get an idea of where they are back over here and back in this area here's the implant crowns in this area right over here the upper teeth fell apart remember I told you that the crowns would fall off along the way here's the, the newly restored dental implants and a post-operative x-ray showing excellent fit of the abutments to the implants and those again are zirconia crowns cemented the implants are completely integrated at this point the patients very happy we're actually gonna be starting to remove those upper teeth at this point and I hope you liked the video please comment or ask questions below I appreciate it thanks so much